Did you know that electricity causes a fire in 35 UK homes every day? If we could change the way our senses interacted with electricity, maybe things would be different. Can you just put the plug in? Mum, I just got some electricity. Get away from it, it might burn you. If we could see electricity, would we so easily let electrical hazards like broken plugs or damaged flexes go unrepaired? And if we could hear electricity? Would you plug in so many appliances that your house's electrical installation may not be able to cope with the load? And what about if you could smell electricity? Oh, you haven't. Haven't what? You've left the lights on in the kitchen, haven't you? <sighs> Maybe then we wouldn't waste it. Electricity is the force which drives our modern way of life. All of the comfort, entertainment and ease with which we live our lives is provided by electricity. And it's only when there's a prolonged power cut that we realise this. Dad, the electricity has gone off again. Unfortunately, although electricity enhances our lives dramatically, it brings with it a great potential for danger. To help keep your family safe, Let's search the house for typical electrical hazards that can be easily prevented. And the technology that, if installed and working properly in your house, can help to prevent injury and fire. There are several ways in which electricity can hurt us. Electric shock happens when someone touches electricity, normally due to some kind of fault. So the electricity will use you to travel through, rather than the wiring for which it was intended. As the electricity passes through the body, it can cause external and internal burns, paralysis, damage to the vital organs and ultimately death. The other ways that electricity can hurt us are usually more indirect. For example, during a short circuit, when two electrical conductors such as the brown and blue or the brown and green and yellow wires come together, a huge amount of electrical current can flow, generating very intense heat, which, if not stopped very quickly, will cause cables to melt and result in a fire. Short circuits can also cause electrical arcs and sparks, which can cause very nasty burns. An overload, which is caused when too many electrical appliances share the same part of the wiring in the house, can also result in cables overheating. For example, in an incorrectly wired kitchen, it would be very easy for an electric hob, washing machine, refrigerator, toaster and kettle to draw more electricity than the wiring can withstand, causing the cables to overheat and potentially resulting in a fire. Fortunately, these hazards are well known. So let's familiarise ourselves with the devices which should be present in your home to protect against electrical danger. This is the consumer unit from our house, in this case missing its protective cover. The consumer unit is the central point at which your whole electrical installation will originate. As you can see, it has a main switch. This is the switch that you can use in an emergency to completely disconnect your electricity supply. Consumer units also incorporate protective devices, in this case fuses. Fuses are very fine pieces of wire which are smaller than the copper conductors within the house circuit they protect and which melt if too much electricity flows. In this way, if there's a short circuit or an overload, which lasts longer than a few seconds, the fuse wire will break, disconnecting the electricity. To make the circuit work again, the fuse needs to be replaced. Sometimes people accidentally or deliberately 
replace the blown fuse with a wire bigger than it should be. Fuse holders are colour-coded to help. White is 5 amps, usually for the lighting. Blue is 15 amps, usually for the immersion heater. And red is 30 amps, usually for socket outlet circuits and larger loads, such as a cooker or electric shower. Putting in a wire bigger than it should be, or in the worst case wrapping foil around a fuse to get it working, are common causes of fires started by electricity. These days, instead of fuses, circuit breakers are used to protect the wires. These can be easily reset, so no need for replacing. Circuit breakers also operate far faster than a fuse. Before replacing a fuse or resetting a circuit breaker, it is vital to try and find the fault which caused them to operate. It may be just as simple as a lamp blowing. When replacing a fuse, the main switch should always be switched off. If the fuse blows again when the main switch is switched on, or the circuit breaker trips again when you reset it, there is something seriously wrong with the circuit, and you should send for an electrician. One important thing to remember is that fuses and circuit breakers do not directly protect against electric shock. This is because they are designed to work when a large amount of electrical current flows. During an electric shock, the current that can flow through the body can be very, very small, but this is still enough to cause serious problems for the body. The only way to automatically disconnect the electricity when someone touches an exposed electrical conductor is to use a device known as a residual current device, or RCD. This clever little device can detect any imbalance in the electrical supply. So, when some electricity escapes to Earth, perhaps through a person, the RCD will disconnect the electrical supply very quickly. To help ensure correct operation, RCDs should be tested at least every three months by means of the built-in test button. Unfortunately, residual current devices are not usually found in installations that are more than 15 years old. Indeed, the age of your electrical installation is a big factor in how well it can protect you against electrical hazards, because, like everything else, it will degrade with age. It is recommended that electrical installations in homes are inspected and tested by an electrician at least every 10 years to find out whether there are any defects, damage or deterioration that affect safety. When was your electrical installation last inspected and tested? So don't rely totally on the protective devices in your electrical installation. You need to give them a helping hand to ensure the safety of you and your family. The best thing you can do is to look around your house and identify electrical hazards, and then do something about them. Portable electrical appliances, that's anything fitted with a plug, are one of the most common causes of electrical injury. It's fairly common for mains power leads to be stretched and tugged around, causing the internal wires to become exposed. Although not immediately dangerous, it does not take much more effort to get from this to this. The best thing to do before plugging in any appliance, especially if it's used regularly and may be moved around a lot, is to visually inspect it for signs of damage. Start at the plug, looking for cracks or signs of electrical burns. Is the lead secured firmly into the rear of the plug, with no exposed internal blue and brown wires showing? Or worse still, bare copper conductors? Then check along the supply lead, looking for signs of wear or damage to the plastic sheathing. Finally, check the appliance itself. Does the flex enter the casing without the inner cores being exposed? Is the flex properly fixed to the appliance? Is the casing free from damage and any signs of electrical overheating? If you suspect that anything is not as it should be, do not use the appliance. Another important thing to remember with electrical appliances is that if the fuse in the plug blows, something has gone wrong. Have the appliance checked by someone who knows what to look for and how to repair it. When replacing fuses, always use one with the same rating to maintain the same level of protection. Most handheld appliances will have a 3 amp or a 5 amp fuse. When you're changing the fuse, this is a good opportunity just to check that the plug is correctly wired 
and that the cable terminations are securely tightened. This house's electrical installation is very typical of one installed in the 1950s and unfortunately the design of its electrical installation never anticipated the wealth of electrical items we use to achieve today's standard of living. So sites like this are very common. Extension leads and adapters to provide extra power points are an area of high risk. They not only have the potential to overload the part of the circuit they're connected to, but are tripping hazards and could even invite potential electric shock situations such as this. If you use drum type extension leads or even a vacuum cleaner with a self-retracting lead, always make sure the lead is fully unwound before using. If you don't, the cable can overheat, possibly damaging the cable insulation. There are three areas of your home where it can be really dangerous to use electrical appliances. The main one of these is the bathroom. For safety reasons, Portable electrical appliances powered from main sockets must never be used in a bathroom or shower room. This is why main sockets are not allowed to be installed in bathrooms or shower rooms. Running in an extension lead just so you can listen to the radio or dry your hair is just inviting a deadly electrical accident. Any electrical appliances in the bathroom, such as a towel rail, must normally be fixed and supplied from a spur like this. They must also be properly bonded. This is where a piece of green and yellow wire is used to connect the appliance to other metalwork in the bathroom. This is to prevent a dangerous voltage occurring between metallic parts in the bathroom if there's a fault in the electrical installation. The kitchen is another area where water and electricity are used in close proximity. But here, because people are unlikely to be wet through, the recommended distance between sockets and the sink is at least 300 millimetres. This situation, where an extra socket outlet has been provided under the sink to power the washing machine, could be a potential cause of electric shock if there was a water leak. As a general rule of thumb, don't operate any electrical switches or appliances with wet hands. Don't clean or fill kettles or irons while they're still plugged in. Toast jammed in the toaster Unplug it before attempting to remove the toast, and don't use a knife. If you use an electric heater in any room of the house, as well as the obvious fire hazard from placing it too near to anything that can burn, do not place it where anything wet can drip into it. Changing light bulbs is another area with both obvious and not so apparent dangers. When changing a light bulb, Always disconnect the electrical supply to it, ideally by removing the fuse or switching off the circuit breaker that protects the circuit. The reason for this is that if wired incorrectly, the lamp holder can still be live even if the light is switched off. You should also use a suitable step ladder to reach ceiling fittings. And what are the not so apparent dangers? Well, when replacing a light bulb, always make sure that you use one of the correct wattage for the lampshade. That's right, lampshades have wattage ratings as well. And this relates to the temperature they can be exposed to before they become a fire risk. An indication that you've selected a higher rated light bulb than the fitting can take is a darkening on the material or a crispy hardening effect of any plastic parts. The garden is another high risk area. Here again, it can be wet and it is very easy for electrical garden tools to cut through their own electrical supply lead. For this reason, you must always use a circuit protected by a residual current device when using electrical tools in the garden. If there's no RCD in your consumer unit, plug-in RCDs are ideal for this and can be brought in most supermarkets and DIY stores. Before each use, push the built-in test button to make sure the RCD is working properly. On the subject of DIY, it's worth noting that most injuries in the home, whether electrical or not, happen when doing it yourself. So taking time to read instructions and wearing the suggested personal protective equipment really is worthwhile. From an electrical point of view, always check over electrical tools before use. 
Make sure leads are out of the way when using anything with a blade. Ideally, use a portable RCD as when in the garden. And of course, when drilling into any wall, take time to decide if there are any cables or pipework where you are going to drill. There are inexpensive devices available that can help you with this. In the past, the homeowner could do all manner of electrical work with little regard for whether it met safety requirements or even if it was just plain bad practice. This all changed in 2005 when, for safety reasons, domestic electrical installation work in England, Wales and Scotland became subject to amended building regulations. This means that except for minor work, such as the replacement or addition of sockets, switches and ceiling roses, most electrical work in homes in England and Wales now needs to be inspected and approved by the local authority building control people. Alternatively, and in many ways preferably, the work should be carried out by an electrician, registered with a government approved scheme who will be able to certify compliance with the legal requirements. And in Scotland, some domestic electrical work, particularly in flats and houses over two storeys, now requires a building warrant. So overall, rather than attempting to do it yourself, it is better to use an electrician registered with a reputable competent person scheme. Further details are available on